Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my June reading wrap up, coming to you all a little bit later than, you know, usual, just because, you know, life and stuff. And I said in my, I think it was my last video? No, two videos ago, I think in my May wrap up, I basically said that I'm going to be slowing down a little bit over the summer. I don't really expect like a big break over the summer or anything along those lines, but I'm definitely slowing down a little bit in terms of like being online creating content of any sort, even my reading slowing down a little bit. However, that was not true in June. I read like six things in June, I think. I didn't actually count, but I read a decent amount and I'm pretty happy with like basically everything I read. So I'm really excited to like do this wrap up for y'all. So the first two books that I have that I finished at the beginning of June were books that I read for the Women's Pride shortlist vlog that I did. I'll link that up in the cards in case you haven't seen it and you're interested in checking it out. Basically I read through the entire Women's Pride shortlist before the winner was announced which I am so proud of myself for. Like I am so bad at any sort of like reading lists or TBRs or anything along those lines. I almost never do award reading because I can never finish books in time or at least not like finish an entire short list or anything along those lines. I don't read fast enough or spend enough time reading to usually do it, but I was able to do it for the Women's Prize short list and that was great. Um, so the two that I finished in June because the prize winner was announced like mid-June were Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead and The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. I'm gonna point y'all over to the vlog video if you want like my full thoughts on those books because especially with Great Circle I felt like I went through a roller coaster of emotions with that book and like every time I did a check-in I had like a different feeling or expectation for the book. I overall in enjoyed both of the books, I will say that, um, but I definitely had like quibbles with both of them. There's like very specific things with both Great Circle as well as this book that I did not enjoy, but overall they were I think three or three and a half star experiences. And so I'm really glad I read like the Women's Price shortlist. I basically enjoyed all of the books on that list. But yeah, Great Circle, it's a really long epic story and so I feel like <laughs> My emotions were all over the place with this book. On the other hand, this one, relatively short, but this is a very like emotional and intense book that is at times very frustrating to read, but also at the same time, like just really glad that I ended up reading this book. And it's definitely a book that I wouldn't have picked up if I wasn't reading through the Women's Prize shortlist. So yes, again, check out the vlog for full thoughts on those because I'm not going to get into the whole thing here since again, I had really elaborate <laughs> thoughts on both of those books as well as all the books on the Women's Price shortlist. All right, and then after reading the Women's Price shortlist, I was like, wow, I'm really neglecting my own physical TBR. So I tried to pick up at least a couple of books that I owned. First up, I read Check Please Volume 2 or Book 2 called Sticks and Scones. This is a lovely little graphic novel series. Check Please started out originally as a webcomic that was published, you know, like every week or something along those lines. And then was eventually eventually published as a book and this is volume two. In this story you are following this character named Eric Biddle uh, who ends up going to college in the first book. You know he it's his freshman year. He was a figure skater and ends up joining the hockey team and so you follow his freshman and sophomore year in book one and in book two you follow his junior and senior year. I'm not going to talk about it too much because like there's some big stuff that happens at the end of book one and so like if you haven't read it yet and you want to I don't want to like spoil that wonderful surprise for you but book two basically just picks up right where book one left off and I enjoyed this one just as much as I enjoyed volume one or book one. I really enjoy the way that they deal with like social media and real life and like celebrity and all of those different things. And there's wonderful gay representation in like gay relationships in this comic series that's just so like wonderful and heartwarming to read about like to see like re relationships like that flourish without like the tragedies and things like that and just seeing like a gay couple do well <laughs> is always great. And so yeah this is just like really like heartwarming and cheerful and just will put you in a good mood. So yeah, the art style is adorable. It's basically the same as you see on the cover, but it's just like really great little slice of like comics. And then continuing on with the heartwarming train, I also listened to the audiobook of By the Book by Jasmine Guillory. This was sent to me by Hyperion, Disney Hyperion. And this is the second book in uh, the Meant to Be series, which I believe are all like novelizations of like these like Disney princess stories. And so this one is basically a retel retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story. And I actually really enjoyed 
this a whole lot. I've read, I think, two of Jasmine Guillory's books and I liked them, but I never really like fully loved them enough to like continue on with reading all the other books that she picked, published. But I got this one in the mail and I was like, you know what, again, just wanting some good lighthearted vibes and the audiobook was available at the library so I was like let me check this out and as someone who really enjoys Beauty and the Beast I really enjoyed this adaptation for the way that it takes the Beauty and the Beast story and modernizes it so in this story you are following this character named Isabel or Izzy and she is a black woman who has been working for quite a few years as an assistant at a publishing house and there is this one celebrity actor who is supposed to be turning in a memoir to the publishing house but he's basically gone like radio silent. Her like boss and her are in California for a work trip and she gets sent on assignment to like go find this celebrity while they're in LA like go to his house and try to figure out what is going on with this book. And so basically what ends up happening is Izzy ends up staying at the celebrity person's house while he's writing his book and so it kind of becomes sort of like that Beauty and the Beast sort of thing of like Belle being trapped at the castle uh, but in this case she's basically gets trapped at this guy's house trying to get him to finish writing his manuscript and similar to this beast this actor named Bo Towers is not super personable <laughs> And so, you know, they get off to a little bit of a rough start, but then, you know, they start to spend more time together and start to understand each other. And then, you know, things happen. I just found this to be like a really lovely, cute book. I did see on Goodreads like a couple of people being disappointed in this book because knowing Jasmine Guillory's other books, you might expect this to be sort of like a steamier romance book or something along those lines. And this is like a purely like PG romance book. So if you are wanting something a little bit steamier, this is not the book for you. But if you don't really care about that, then I recommend picking this up. I haven't read the first book in the series. I don't even know what the first book in the series is, like what the retelling is or anything along those lines. But now I'm kind of intrigued to check out the other ones and see like maybe the other ones will also work for me. But yeah, I found this to be really delightful. I really enjoyed the way that Izzy and Bo's relationship sort of developed over time, kind of in the similar way of Beauty and the Beast where like starts off a little bit difficult but then they start to get to know each other and then you can see them starting to uh, get feelings for each other and all of those different things and I just thought it was really sweet and heartwarming again and it was just kind of nice to you know read a nice little happily ever after book. Speaking of audiobooks another book that I read or listened to in the month of June was Black Cake. This is a book that came out earlier this year. It's been getting pretty positive reviews and so I've had my eye on this one for a little bit and I was able to get again an audiobook from the library and I love this book. This audiobook first of all is really fantastic. I was like so engrossed in this story. It was so well done. So if you're interested in this book I do recommend the audiobook but in the story you are following this woman named Eleanor or the family of this woman named Eleanor. She has recently passed away and basically at the reading of the will gathers her two kids named Byron and Benny who have recently like kind of gotten into a falling out and so they haven't really been in contact and so you know they get together for the reading of the will and it turns out there's a lot of things about their family history that these two don't know about. The story basically jumps in time a little bit as well as like jumps perspectives between the mom telling the story of her life as well as what's going on in Byron and Benny's life and you kind of just see sort of like all of the things that have gone on in their mother's life as well as their father's life that have led up into this point. They were born in the Caribbean and you see sort of what their life was like there and what their life was meant to be and all of the different like struggles and difficulties that they've faced along the way and the things that they've kept hidden from their children and it's just it, there's no way to really sum up this book that I just really enjoyed a lot. I will say like this was a four star reading experience for me partially because like I'm not fully convinced that I needed the perspectives of Byron and Benny. Like you learn a little bit about like what's going on in their life right now. It does feed a little bit into explaining sort of like why Byron and Benny are a little bit contentious at the beginning of the book and they're not really speaking to each other and they're having a hard time talking to each other even though their mother has just died and their father died a while ago. But like the really like engrossing part of the story in my opinion was learning about Eleanor's past and finding out like where she came from, her hopes and dreams, the people she's met along the way that have made like significant differences in their lives, how all these people connect to who she is today and all of that stuff and I just found it to be a really beautiful portrait of like a person's life and how uh, you know you think you know 
who your mother is or who your parents are, but really they lived entire lifetimes before you existed. <laughs> yeah, like you feel like you know who your parents are, but really you don't really know too much about like their past or the past versions of themselves and things like that. And so I found this to be a really great just sort of exploration of that idea. I think that if you're someone who again just really enjoys these sort of like epic fam family stories, I mean this isn't really an epic family stories because you're not going through generations, but just seeing sort of like all of the tumultuous things that Eleanor had gone through throughout the course of her life, it feels almost like an epic family story to a certain degree. I thought just found this book to be like completely enrapturing uh is that a word I don't know but I was completely enraptured by this book <laughs> and I definitely understand all of the hype behind it so yeah definitely add me to the list of people who really enjoyed Black Cake all right and then I picked up two more books that were library books because they were books that I was excited about first up I read this Golden State by Merit Weisenberg. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about this book because I did an entire review of it because I enjoyed this book so much. This was one of those books that I was really looking forward to this year. It popped up on a list of 2022 releases that I was looking at back in January and I just remember this synopsis catching my eye and sort of like wanting to check it out at some point and so I finally got a copy from the library and it like blew my expectations out of the water. In this story you are following this character named Poppy who has spent her entire life basically like hiding who she is from everyone else around her. No one knows who her family truly is and Poppy doesn't even know the truth about her past. They're constantly using fake identities, they're constantly moving around, all this stuff. And Poppy basically decides to rebel and she ends up taking basically a, like an Ancestry.com sort of DNA test and this ends up opening up a whole can of worms. This is basically like a contemporary young adult coming of age story. Um, you follow Poppy as she is growing up. She's, you know, turning 18 and she is trying to figure out her life and her future and what's true about her family and who they really are and what happened in the past and all of these different things. It's like that perfect blend of contemporary fiction with a little bit of mystery thrown into it to keep your attention. And yeah, I was just completely enraptured by this book as well. Again, definitely go check out that review for my full thoughts. You know, no spoilers in there or anything along those lines. But I really enjoyed this book a whole lot. Definitely an underrated read in my opinion. And I'm hoping that some more people are willing to check it out. So yeah, I gave this one I, like a four and a half, maybe even five stars. Like I haven't fully decided yet, but I feel like this is a five star book for me, which again, why I ended up doing an entire review on this book. So yeah, definitely go check out that review if you want more of my thoughts. But I adore this book. It's definitely going to be on my favorite reads of the year. All right. And then the final book I have to talk about today is Night Crawling by Layla Motley. This is a brand new release. I think it just came out in the month of June. It was like kind of on my radar because I was seeing it all over Instagram and things like that. And I was like, let me just put it on hold at the library because I'm hearing so much positive stuff about it. And I also ended up in really enjoying this book. So in this story, you are mainly following this character named Kiara. She lives in East Oakland with her brother Marcus in their apartment. Their mother is in jail and it's just the two of them just kind of like scraping to get by. She's working a lot in order to like pay the bills and in order to pay rent and all this stuff. But her brother Marcus dreams of becoming a rapper and so he's kind of off doing his own music thing and not really helping out around the house. They have like a neighbor in their apartment complex who has a kid. The mother is addicted to drugs and so Kiara feels bad for this kid and ends up like basically like taking care of him like walking him to the bus stop so he can get to school and picking him up from the bus stop and you know trying to take care of him as much as she can. They have an uncle who ended up becoming famous as a rapper and so that's kind of also where like Marcus is trying to become a rapper himself to like prove something to this uncle who kind of abandoned them completely. And so it comes to a point where basically rent is raising and Kiara feels like she has no other choice and so she you know is going out trying to find another job and she ends up basically working the streets or in this case you know night crawling and while doing this in order to earn extra money she ends up get becoming involved with some Oakland police officers and things kind of escalate from there. This book is so grim and difficult to read at times and there's an author note at the end of the book where this story is fiction but it's based on this actual event that happened where I don't remember what year it was but basically there was a story that came out that there were these Oakland police officers who were basically taking advantage of underage people who were working the streets you know there was the court case that happened and all this stuff 
But then the story kind of disappeared, but Layla Motley could never really forget the story and she couldn't get her mind off the question of like what happened to this girl and all this stuff and so she basically explores that in here this is 100 percent a literary fiction like character driven story it's heartbreaking but also you like don't want to stop reading because you just don't know what's going to happen Layla motley is a poet herself and so you kind of see that come out in the writing of this book there's something really like beautiful in the words that she chooses and the way that she like structures the story and things like that that I feel like is always really present when you read novels by poets and this isn't necessarily a book that's going to leave you feeling like super satisfied or anything along those lines but I just can't encourage enough people to check out this book so yeah if you are someone who enjoys a darker literary fiction book I definitely think that this is worth picking up it's a little bit on the shorter side I found it to be really engaging I feel like I read this whole thing in like 48 hours because I just wanted to know what was going to happen to these characters. The metaphors in here are really beautiful. The way that she uses the setting of the apartment in order to be a metaphor for the lives that these characters are living and all of this stuff. There's so many different twists and turns that are go on in here, you know, just when you think things might be getting better then they get worse and it's really difficult and complicated and these characters are difficult and complicated and there's some really interesting discussions in here about how a lot of black women end up basically taking on the burdens of others and things like that. And yeah, it was just really, really well done. Again, not super lighthearted or anything along those lines. Like, it, it could be really emotional, but it was a fantastic read and I highly recommend it. So those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. Like I said, a pretty solid reading month in my opinion. Let me know down in the comments below if you read any of the books that I talked about here today or if you have any questions or comments about any of the books that I mentioned, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. Or let me know what your favorite read of June was. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.